Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be looking at getting this GS750 running perfectly, or as close to perfect as possible. Obviously, in order to get this bike running perfectly, we're going to be taking a look at tuning these carburetors. However, there's a couple things we need to do beforehand before we just dive right in. First thing we'll be taking a look at is this air filter. Uh, this is actually a K&N unit, and originally I was planning on just taking it off and cleaning it up using the K&N recharge kit. Uh, unfortunately, it is near impossible to put this back on because the rubber is actually <laughs> insanely hard. So I went out and got this foam unit and we're gonna see if I made the correct decision in getting this foam unit instead of paying the $75 for this K&N one. Taking a closer look at the K&N filter, we can see that it's nice and dirty and the rubber is incredibly hard. This is a spray on air filter oil that I will be using on this foam unit. The factory service manual says you can just use motor oil on a polyurethane foam filter, but I like to think that we've advanced in oil technology since then. If the Suzuki project is new to you, go ahead and check out part 1 with the link in the description down below. So the next thing we're going to look at is adjusting these valves. The factory service manual also says that anytime the valves are adjusted, you then have to adjust the carburetors. So that's exactly what we're going to do. First step is to undo all the bolts that hold the valve cover on. I had to remove the horn to make clearance to reach some of the bolts. With all the bolts out of the way, the valve cover just pops right off. It's a little tight getting the valve cover out. I ended up having to take off the valve cover breather to make enough room. Removing this cover will allow us to put a 19mm wrench onto the crankshaft and turn the engine by hand. Checking the valve clearance is actually pretty simple. First things first, you need to make sure to do this on a cold engine. Next, we're going to rotate our engine until the camshaft we're checking goes into either the A or B position. From there, we just shove different sized fuel gauges in between our cam lobe and our shim. We're going to keep going until we find one that doesn't fit, and then write down the size of the last one that did. In this case, the biggest fuel gauge that we got in there was 0.102 millimeters, which is outside of our specified range of 0.03 to 0.08 millimeters. Getting the old shim out is pretty straightforward, using the specified tool to hold down the tappet and then using a magnet to actually pull the shim out. Here I kept track of all the valves, their sizes, and the measurements that I took. Now just pop in the correct size shim and we're done. Next thing we're going to be working on is the ignition relay modification. So we're going to be using this relay to help power the coils with uh, 12 volts that comes straight from the battery. Because currently the 12 volts is going through all the switch gear and then to the coils. Uh, and we're going to switch that up so that now the power goes from straight from the battery to the coils. And this will give us a more consistent uh, spark along with a stronger spark and it will help us run a little bit better. Here's a pretty basic wiring diagram of the ignition relay modification, and you can see with the relay we're bypassing all the switch gear. Here I have laid out all the basic tools that you're going to need for this. I have some connections from vintage connections, as well as the crimp that goes along with it. 
And here we have the Bosch 5 pin relay that has two outputs. And finally, a soldering iron and heat shrink. Here I'm just starting to disconnect some of the wires that lead to and from the coil. I've already disconnected the headlight to be able to pull the wiring harness through the frame and give me a little bit more space to work with. Here we can see the two orange wires. Each one of these goes to one of the coils and attached to them we have a white wire and this black and there's a like weird black wire. Uh, both of those go from the ignition uh, module so this gives us the actual signal on when to actually hit uh, turn on the coils but you know, these two orange wires are going to end up as the outputs into our relay and this uh, original orange wire where these went into this is going to become our new signal wire on when to actually switch the relay on now comes the point of no return where we clip off the old bullet connectors and attach our new spade connectors. Next, it's time to start making the cables that will run from the battery. For the positive cable, ideally you would be running a inline fuse, but I didn't do that just out of laziness. With all the wires made, we can start connecting them to the relay, and on screen I have exactly where all the wires should go. All what's left is to slap in the new battery and try it out. Last thing to do is fine tune the carburetors using the Gunson Color Tune after we vacuum sync the carburetors. First step is to remove the Allen screws from the vacuum port so we can attach our vacuum lines to the gauges. The screws on the right side of the bike came off without any problem, however the ones on the left side started giving me an issue. And just like that, I ended up stripping the Allen screws, so it's time to get more creative with how to take them off. It was time to bust out the death wheel to cut a slot in the head so I can fit a normal screwdriver. I did this with both the inside and the outside of the screws. None of the screwdrivers gave me enough leverage, so I got creative and used a wrench with the screwdriver bit. With all the vacuum lines hooked up, we can now go ahead and get started vacuum tuning. Here's how the vacuum gauges looked when I first started it up. We can see that the number 2 cylinder isn't pulling nearly as much vacuum as the other 3. To adjust the vacuum, we need to take off the covers of each of the carburetors. This will expose the adjustment screw for fine tuning the slide height. 
One thing to keep in mind is that as you adjust one carburetor, this will affect how much vacuum the other three are going to be pulling, so you have to go between each of the carburetors and adjust as needed. And after some fiddling around, we can now see that each of the carburetors is pulling roughly the same amount of vacuum. With the carburetor synced, it's now time to bust out the color tune. The color tune is a pretty neat piece of equipment that allows you to see the combustion as it's happening. The ultimate goal is to get a nice blue flame as that indicates a nice complete burn. As the flame starts to get more yellow, that indicates a rich mixture. And then as the flame starts to get more white, that indicates a lean mixture. We're going to be using it at idle and also across the rev range. Here you can actually see the color team change colors as I mess with the air screw to adjust the fuel mixture at idle. To adjust the fuel mixture at higher RPM, we're going to be messing with the fuel screw. And keep in mind that as you mess with the fuel screw, you may have to go back and adjust the idle circuit as well. The number 2 cylinder gives us a really good look of the flame. Now it's just a matter of going through all four cylinders and getting them all to look like this. There isn't a whole lot that's difficult about this, it's just pretty tedious. One thing I noticed was that the electrode on the number 3 spark plug was looking pretty white, so that indicates that it's been running lean. Now that all the adjustments have been made, let's start it up and see how it sounds. That about wraps up this video on getting this thing tuned up. On the next video, I'll be taking this out on its maiden voyage after we fix all the other miscellaneous things to get this thing road ready. So suspension, brakes, tires, things like that. Uh, if you want to catch that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below on your thoughts on how I'm doing so far. I like to read all the comments and your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm god.